just love this new alarm clock. Don't you, Fang? <laughs> Happy Vampire's Day! Mona the Vampire at your service! Vampire's Day? Isn't it Valentine's Day? Maybe for grown-ups it is, but not for vampires. It's the reddest day of the year, you know. Don't forget your markers. Miss Gatto's gonna have us do arts and crafts today for sure. She just loves Valentine's Day. I'm way ahead of you. I'm packing away eight varieties of super gruesome markers, including contusion blue and plasma pink. Boy, Valentine's Day sure makes grown-ups act goofy. How mushy and weird. Tell me about it. My mom makes heart-shaped pancakes every Valentine's morning. Then every Valentine's night, her and my dad have a romantic dinner for two. Talk about creepy. No, now. Breakfast is ready. Gotta go. My heart-shaped pancakes await. <laughs> hey, I don't smell pancakes. No time for pancakes, dear. I'm already late for a meeting. I'm sorry, honey. I hope toast is okay. Oh, I won't be home for dinner, so I think Dad will be taking you out. But what about the special dinner that you and Dad have every Valentine's Day? No time. Have a good day, sweetheart. Phew. Just in time. That's right. Just in time for a tardy slip. All right, class, take out your math books. Today, we'll be tackling linear algebra. Miss Gatto, what about the Valentine's Day poems you wanted us to recite? I've spent days on mine. Save them for another class, Angela. As far as I'm concerned, Valentine's Day doesn't exist, especially when you don't have anyone to celebrate with. Now, let's get to work. The interrelations between dimensioned quantitative scalars and algebraic structures involving combinations of vectors and matrices form a branch of applied mathematics called dimensional analysis. Is it just me, or is Valentine's Day kind of different this year? Yeah, none of the grown-ups are in their usual mushy moods. So far today, I haven't seen any hand-holding, flower-giving, or heart-shaped pancakes. This is a disaster. The worst Valentine's Day ever. I can't turn the heat down. All of my chocolate is ruined. Guys should be able to get the part you need by tomorrow. Until then, I don't know what to tell you. But Valentine's Day is the busiest day of the year for me, not tomorrow. Oh, speaking of Valentine's Day, I forgot to get my wife a present. Mind if I grab a thermos of chocolate? Help yourself. It's a disaster. I even hear the flower truck broke down on its way into town. No flowers, no chocolates. Boy, Cupid's got his work cut out for him if he's gonna save this Valentine's Day. Who's Cupid? I don't know. But I bet I know someone who does. Wings for flying. A diaper to keep him warm. And, of course, his bow and arrow. There. This is the guy you're looking for. So let me get this straight. This Cupid guy flies around in a pair of diapers armed with a bow and arrow. He singles people out, then fires love arrows at them. And whoever gets hit falls in love with the first person they set eyes on? Yes, according to myth, Valentine's is his busiest day. Okay, Dad, thanks for your help. I don't know, Mona. A flying diaper guy who shoots love arrows? Well, if he does exist, he's doing a pretty crummy job of making this Valentine's Day romantic. If he does exist, then we'll find him. Right, Fang? Wow! That's it! Lead us to him, Fang! Lead us to Cupid! This way, this way! Uh, that way, that way! This way, this way! Not exactly greased lightning, is he? Shh! This is how he picks up someone's scent. Ha <laughs> ha! 
job this Valentine's Day. There's no hand-holding, no flowers, no heart-shaped pancakes. I'm trying my best! Shouldn't you know what to do by now, Cupid? I'm not Cupid. I'm his older brother, Stu. I'm just filling in for Cupid. Oh, is your brother sick or something? Yeah, lovesick. He's been sitting alone in the tunnel of love crying ever since his girlfriend Juanita dumped him. But not to worry, I I've got everything under control. Ooh, a potential love target at three o'clock. <laughs> Just make them too hyper. Um. Really, Frank, it's just a poodle. Hey, where'd Stu go? Forget Stu. We have to find Cupid. He's the only one who can stop this. To the tunnel of love. Step right up and see sights that will dazzle you. The man who sweats up a storm! Ooh. And Acuba, the king of acorn cracking! Ah! And Ted, the guy with the world's longest toenails. Ew. Excuse me, sir, but where's the tunnel of love? Now, why do you kids want to see a boring ride that doesn't even work? when we've got Sweaty Misto right inside. Um, school project. The Tunnel of Love is just over there. Thanks, mister. Hey, how much do you want for the bird cat? We have to get this ride up and running fast. They say there's something wrong with the wiring. I don't think Cupid's home. Maybe we should go. It's really dark in here. We have to find him. Hey, Cupid. That should do it. making a mess of Valentine's Day. You have to stop him. Without Juanita, Valentine's Day has lost all meaning. I can't help you. But you have to. You're Cupid. Without you, Valentine's Day would just be like any other day. I'm sorry. I'm just not in the mood. Without Juanita... Cupid? Juanita? Stu brought me here. Juanita. He told me you wanted to apologize. Apologize? You're the one who left. Because you were acting like a jerk. You were mean to me first. You never consider my feelings. All you want to do is argue. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, Stu, do something. One super special love arrow coming up. You missed. <laughs> Juanita. Cupid. Stu, you did it! You got Cupid and Juanita back together. Yeah, I did. I saved Valentine's Day. I'm not such a klutz after all. Uh, happy Valentine's Day.
Valentine's Day. Mona, you shouldn't have. I didn't actually. I ordered out. The bill's in the kitchen. Happy Valentine's Day! Happy, Happy Valentine's Day! To Valentine's Day! And to a real Valentine hero. That's the last time I make cheese drip lasagna. I'll never clean off this baked on grease. Sounds like a classic case of strangle root. Or maybe grip root. The roots of this tree are probably tying the town's plumbing into knots. Whoa. Talk about a major crisis. Not really. I'll come back after lunch and cut the tree down. That should fix things. Looks like we got us a storm heading in. He's going to cut it down? But it's my favorite tree. It's even older than I am. I'm sorry, Mona, but it's the only way to stop the water damage. I think there's more here than meets the eye. What do you mean? Well, this tree has been here for ages, and it's never caused anything like this before. Suddenly, the ground starts spouting water, and they expect us to believe it's a plumbing problem? What kind of a ridiculous explanation is that? Uh, have you got a better one? Yes. According to a legend I read in a comic book once, trees are gateways to other dimensions. And once the barrier between dimensions is breached, anything can happen. Trees can spout water. Dish sprayers come alive. Why, the next thing you know, it'll start raining frogs. Hey, Fang, what you got? Oh, it's an old toy pirate ship. Must have been buried ages ago and gotten washed up. Wait a minute. This isn't a toy. Look at that. That ant? Not that. That! <laughs> Don't be afraid. We're not gonna hurt you. you playing in that quagmire. All right, Dad. Come on, let's get you guys inside. So you were saying you took a wrong turn and ended up breaching the dimensional barrier? Yep. And now you're stuck and can't get back home? Oh, we can get back home. All we have to do is go right back through the dimensional rift. But we have two problems. <laughs> Shoo Fang. You were saying? Problem number one. The dimensional gateway closes at high tide. In an hour, it will be sealed up completely. An hour is plenty of time. Problem number two. The second we crossed into this dimension, our cotton grew to gigantic proportions. Wow, Mona. It's just like you said. 
When the barrier between dimensions is breached, anything can happen. Trees spell water. Miniature pirate captains go to gigantic proportions. Our captain wandered off and, well, there's no way we can leave without him. Then me and my friends will find him for you. An hour isn't much time. Come on, Charlie, we're looking for a pirate. How complicated can that be? This year, the Town Savoy Society will be presenting the opera, The Pirates of Penzance. So, following the approach of the Method School of Acting, I'd like you all to get into character by becoming your characters. Stay in costume and think like pirates. Okay, keep your eyes peeled for someone with a peg leg or a parrot accessory. Look. Arr, this be a fine hoagie. Um. Wait! Shiver me timbers! They're closing fast! That's it! Be your character! Gangway, Miss Gono! I mean, er, uh, where are you taking me, Mona? Reverend Gregory! Sorry, Reverend. We thought you were someone else. Yes, I seem to get that a lot from you three. What are you doing in a pirate costume? The Town Savoy Society is putting on Pirates of Penzance. I'm playing the role of a pirate. Congratulations! It's all very exciting and... Oh, I, I best be off. In honor of the Savoy Society, the Krabby Cove Seafood Restaurant is having a special lunch promotion. Pirates eat at half price. Say, Reverend, mind if we tag along? Not at all. The more the merrier. <laughs> Mona, we don't have time for lunch. The dimensional gateway closes in less than half an hour. We have to find the pirate captain. Right. And what kind of pirate could resist a seafood feast at half price? Well, are your kids gonna order something, or are you still waiting for someone? We're still waiting, ma'am. See any real pirates around? Nothing here is real. Fake seashells, fake costumes. It's company policy. I've lost me appetite. How I wish my crew were here. Oh, no! Not you again! Not so fast! Let me guess. You thought I was somebody else. He must have slipped out during all the confusion. We've got less than 15 minutes to find him. We'll never make it in time. Think. Think. If you were a pirate, where would you go? Somewhere near water? That's it! And the biggest body of water in town is... The, the river. river! It sounds like someone's crying. It's coming from over there! Um, excuse me? Not you again! What do you want? We want to bring you back to your crew. My crew? They're waiting to leave with you right now. You must be homesick. Actually, I think he's seasick. That I am. I've had enough of this world. I wish to go back home, but I'm too big to fit on my own ship. Don't worry. My Zapparama gun will shrink you down to proper size. Hurry, Charlie, hurry! That tree is a menace to society. It's given my hair that dated flat look. Maybe it's a good thing Mona isn't here to see this. Hold still, Captain. The Zapparama is very sensitive. Liz can wait! Oh, look out! Ah! What happened? The 
storm must have caused my Zapparama gun to malfunction. What do we do now? We'll need a ship if we want to get back in time. so I can dry off my Zapparama gun and turn us back to normal size. Mona! You guys okay? Fine! Yeah, great! Fine. Turns out the water damage was from this rusted out valve. I replaced it with a new one, so you folks won't be having any more trouble. Well, there you go, Mona. Your tree is safe. And so are those interdimensional pirates. Right. Don't tell me you found another boat. Nope. More like a memento.